On this episode of The Fisherman TV, Fred Galafaro and Captain John Padawano are hunting for the cow stripers that follow the huge schools of Manhattan up the northeast coast. Joining them is Brandon Cotton of Okuma, who has traveled all the way from the west coast to get in on this action firsthand. Stay tuned. You're watching The Fisherman TV, brought to you by Yozori. Juno is a good opportunity for anyone who really wants to catch a trophy striper anywhere from Jersey all the way up to uh, Massachusetts. What you get uh, sometimes starting early May uh, down in Jersey is a uh, big movement of bunker or menhaden moving up the coast and the bass tend to follow those fish up from the wintering grounds. Uh, they'll work their way right up the coast, get a great run of fish along the south shore of Long Island, you get a run of fish up in Long Island Sound. And many of these fish are over 30 pounds, and a lot of people manage to get their first 50 out of these schools. First thing you want to do is find the bait. You know, where you find the bait is where you're going to find the fish. And uh, yeah, sometimes it's very obvious, especially if it's calm. Uh, a lot of the best opportunities come very early in the morning or late in the day, you know, lower light periods. Also when the wind is down, it makes it very easy to find the bait and the fish. Uh, there's also times when uh, it's a no-brainer. You'll see you know, 30, 40 pound bass rushing bunker up on the surface. Uh, you know, I fished for stripers before, uh, you know, bluefish and so forth, you know, only a couple times, not many times. Uh, but this is the first time we've actually done the whole, you go out there and we're going through big bunker schools and we're snagging these bait and, you know, we're leaving it out there. You know, we're not, you know, when they first told me this concept, I'm like, okay, so we, you don't reel it in and then put it on a, on a live bait hook. You know, no, no, you leave it out there and, and you, you know, there's different, uh, it's different techniques. So it was pretty neat to see that. Well, you know, in the, in the beginning, in the early morning, uh, you know, a little bit darker, so you could see some of the bait flickering, uh, you know, flipping on the surface. Uh, but as the sun came up is when you really got to see the size of these, these bait balls, these bunker balls. I mean, it was just massive, massive schools. And, you know, we get a lot of this stuff, uh, uh, you know, big bait balls and stuff on the West Coast, where I, I do a majority of my fishing. Uh, but nothing where, you know, this clear water that these fish come up. And these, these, these baits are, are huge, you know, 12 to 14 inch giant bait uh, bunker. And uh, so it was really neat to see that. And, uh, and when, like I said, when the sun came up, you could really see the dense schools. Uh, and you put your polarized sunglasses on, look down in the water, you could see each individual fish as part of a giant school in the water. So that was really neat to see. With the treble hook, what I like to do and I tell people is you cast it out, you can try to gauge how deep the fish are. If they're down, if you see them on top, just let it free fall for one or two seconds, real tight and just, you know, long, steady pulls. You don't have to go whipping it through them. Just a long, steady pull, and you, you should get it. What I like to do, I like to have bunker swim down. And I'll go through, I'll snag a bunker, and within 10 seconds, 20 seconds sometimes, I'll take that bunker and get another one because he's not cooperating. Um, I want bunker that swim down below the school because for 98% of the time, that's where most of the fish are going to be. They're going to be down below the school or down off to the sides of the school. There you go. Uncle Freddy's got one. Come on, baby. You bang that good. Coming up, Uncle Freddy, I don't know. Uh huh. Yeah.
Yeah, you know, I, I think in the beginning they had mentioned, you know, that's uh, it's best to use a spinning rod, which I can kind of understand. Uh, for me, I, I've always just been more comfortable using a conventional reel or a, a you know bait casting reel. And uh, uh, I work for Akuma. We make a great 350 size uh, reel called the Komodo 350. It's perfect for all kinds of inshore species. Uh, um, I've never used it out here, but uh, it worked very well today. Uh, so I, that's what I used to cast, and uh, you know it took a little bit just to kind of get the the, the uh, technique right as far as the snagging and, and kind of winding and 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 doing that kind of thing. Uh, you know, making big broad uh, broad sweeps versus you know shorter ones and so forth. So I think after you know a little bit, it took a little bit of time, but once you get it, you kind of get the hang of it. And, and once we started finding these bunker schools, it was it was pretty uh, uh, fairly simple once you got the hang of it. So. Good sound, isn't it? Oh. Well, they had mentioned to me, you know, that uh, typically the way the bites happen is a lot of times you'll feel a good a tick or a thump on your bait and then the line will just start coming off. And, you know, the first bite, I really didn't, didn't feel the actual pickup, but I knew that the bait was taking off extremely fast. It was either going to be nervous or I had a bite. Uh, so I, you know, put the reel in gear and it loaded up right away. And that's when I hooked up the first time uh, this in, in the morning and uh, ended up being a bluefish, a uh, good size one. We never really got it all the way to the boat, uh, but at least it kind of gave me a, an opportunity to sort of get, get what it feels like to get a bite on one of these big, big bunkers. So. What I look for is uh, several things in a bunker school. I look for bunker that really don't care what's above them. Uh, if you have a school of bunker, even if it's on top, and you throw a bunker snag in the middle of them and they disperse or go down, chances are, again, they're not really being pressured by any kind of game fish underneath them. Bunker that just look like they're hurried and in a frenzy, doing a whirlpool, rushing, any of the, you know, the classic signs, of course, that's what we're looking for. You know, as the day progressed, uh, you know, like, like any types of fishing, your mind kind of starts to wander, well, hey, maybe today's just not the day. Uh, we were seeing tons and tons of bait. I mean, we were just going, more the day wore on, the more bait balls we saw, and it just seemed like the bigger, more dense they got. Uh, so that was, that was really neat. It actually keep, keeps you really kind of focused and into it, because you know that there's these big baits and these big schools that you know there's got to be big predators right behind them. We gave ourselves about another 45 minutes for the day uh, and we were in a really good spot. We, it's a really good sized bunker school, probably one of the biggest ones we've seen all day. And uh, you know I just actually, to be honest with you, I was sort of kind of looking off on the horizon. You know it's a beautiful area. I was kind of not paying attention and I, I felt a good thump in that pickup and uh, I let, gave it about a five count, put it in gear and I felt a good, good heavy weight. And uh, the, you know, fish came off. I could feel the tail beat of the bait again, so and came off. And a little discouraged, but you know, okay, I've, I've had that happen in other fishing situations. So I immediately put it in free spool, uh, and within 10 seconds, I got picked up again. Another hard, hard hit, and the bait took off. And you know, this time I was able to put the put the hook in the fish. So that was that was pretty exciting. Once once I knew I had a, a real good fish on. Cool. That might be. The right kind. That's the right kind right there. Yep. Yes, sir. There you go. Feeling like the right kind now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, to be honest, when it, when I first had set that hook uh, and wound down to the fish, you know, it it you've heard it before when people catch some larger fish, it kind of feels like the bottom. And you know our bait, we're you know not too deep of water there, and uh, it kind of crossed my mind like, well, maybe he ran down into something and got snagged. I don't, I don't know. Uh, but then I started, the, then the line started peeling off. I knew right away it was it was uh, the right uh, kind. Just, just uh, I didn't know how line, big, obviously, but uh, as the wave. fight wore on, you know, it got a little windy, so the boat's kind of moving away, and the fish is starting to come up as I'm you know tiring it out and, and fighting the fish. So 
Uh, you know, once once I kind of got a good look at it, kind of far off, I, I kind of knew it was pretty good size. I didn't know how big at the time, but uh, I knew it was a pretty good fish. So. I think you got a good fish on there. Okay. Nice fish. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. As I'm fighting this fish, I'm getting it closer to the boat. Uh, you know, I started getting kind of quiet, you know, and that's just, I think, because for me, it's starting to realize, hey, this is, could be my biggest striped bass uh, that I've ever caught. You know, I've caught some freshwater ones, 20, 25 pounds, uh, but I've never caught um, any really large saltwater ones uh, before. So this was, uh, you know, for me, I think I was more nervous. I didn't want to really lose the fish. I would kind of fought it for about, you know, getting it all the way up through the, through the kind of the windy weather and, uh, and so forth for the last, last few minutes. I really didn't want to lose the fish. So I got a little quiet there. Uh, but once I got it up and we got the net on it, I, uh, I was pretty stoked, pretty happy to say the least. So I, we knew it was a big fish, and when I hefted it over the rail there, uh, it was pretty amazing at the size. So Just leave his head in and comes up. Okay. Leave his head over. Okay. There you go. Come on, bring him in. Right. Another one behind back up, him? No. Back up, back up, back up, back up. Back up. Back up. Yeah! Right. Thank you, sir. Pull him in. All right. I'll hold the rod. You pull okay. him in. I'll go. You do the work. You pull All righty. How heavy is it? Oh, yeah. Woo! Nice. There you go. Yeah. Good job, bud. It's 40. Come on, get him up there. Let's see. That's a beast. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. Nice fish. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice That's fish. your biggest strike forever. Oh, for sure. Beautiful. Yeah. The sea lice on him. A lot of sea lice yeah. just came in. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Tail oh, man. Nice. Nice Thank fish. you, guys. You're welcome. Man, that was nice. awesome. What a fight. Look at the tail on that thing. You can see I like to use small travels. I like, you know, to be unobtrusive but, uh, so the, the game fish do not notice it. And, you know, when the bass are like on a feeding frenzy, they're going to eat it. But like days like today when they're picky and you're getting, you know, you're getting like hits and they're not very aggressive, lightening up and using smaller is always going to do it. And you're going to hook them. You know, I like to use the snags today, had the bronze hooks. So if you do hook a fish deep or you break one off, that hook will rust out soon. I, I do not like to use stainless steel hooks. You know, I go for my braid with a double uni. Uh, it's double uni you can tie in about 30 seconds. And I have yet to find a stronger knot, in my opinion, and easier to tie. So that's what I use. It seems to be very dependable. And I always like to use a shot of fluorocarbon. And I know it's a little bit more expensive, but you know, for a few cents and my peace of mind, it builds my confidence. I'll use the fluorocarbon and then you know, to hook the treble hook on, I don't like to use snaps or any of that stuff. I tie direct and either polymer knot or an improved clinch knot. And I, n I never seem to have a problem with stuff breaking. Although probably 95% of the fish are caught on bunker or bunker chunks when the fish are on these bunker schools, there are opportunities to catch them on top water plugs, on surface plugs, especially if the fish are in tight to the beach, shallow water, or when you see the fish rushing the bunker up to the surface, uh, we've caught a number of fish on, uh, on surface plugs. Uh, there are also times when the fish can be uh, very fussy, you know, even when, they're, even when they're rushing fish like that. I mean, you can have fish all around the boat, but they're tough to get to eat. Uh, consider dropping down a lighter leader. We always use fluorocarbon for this fishing. Theoretically, it is invisible, and that's what you want. But we've found that dropping down, a lot of guys like to use 50, drop down to 40, maybe even 30 pound tests. And, uh, and you won't have a problem hanging on to the fish, especially if there's no structure around. And there's times when it will make a difference in the bites. Well, I, it's, it's really neat to me. I actually enjoy fishing with people for the first time or, or people that I don't get to fish with that often. I've actually had fished one other time with Fred, but I've never met uh, Captain John. And uh, it, they're really neat, knowledgeable guys. And I really enjoy going somewhere where I don't really necessarily know, you know what I'm doing in this environment. I, you know, I fish quite a bit, but you know, it's not something I do every day. So it's neat to kind of see their, their process and how they do things. And they've done it for many, many years. And uh, they're just a couple of great guys, and, and they're very knowledgeable. And I think that's great when you, you start learning stuff. And by the end of the day, just, just from going with somebody like that, it just makes you a better angler overall, in my opinion. You know, the snag and drop technique is probably the most effective. Unfortunately, uh, it does lead to a lot of fish that are difficult to release. You know, they get that treble. And some guys are using real big trebles on, on the weighted snag hooks, and uh, it can damage the fish's mouth or they swallow it down. 
uh, which makes it very difficult to release. And with the bag limits we have today, you know, in some states like New York, you can only keep one fish over 40 inches. Uh, I don't think any state can keep more than two fish of that, of that size. So, uh, you know, something to consider, as effective as snag and drop is, is uh, when you can get the fish back to the boat, the bait back to the boat, uh, take it off the snag, put it on another rod with a circle hook, a big circle hook, 9-0 preferably, and, uh, and let the bunker swim that way. Again, if you want to get it down, you, you got to think about putting some weight on your line. You can use a fish finder rig. Um, there's also times, and sometimes some of the biggest fish are caught on uh, just chunks or the head of a bunker, and you want to get that down to the bottom.